name is Dr. Lester Hartman. I'm from Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics. Today we're going to talk about poison ivy. Remember, if you are not part of this practice, your pediatrician may have other suggestions. Please follow their advice. First of all, I want to talk about the myths of um, uh, poison ivy. The first myth that people will say sometimes is, don't touch my poison ivy, you can catch it. That is not true. After about two hours from when a child is exposed and has the resin on the skin called uracil, it breaks down and is no longer contagious. Yet remember this, a rash will evolve over several days on a child. The actual rash, when it is weepy, is not contagious. That liquid in it is not the uracil and it is not contagious. On occasion, if there is significant tenderness, like you touch it and it really hurts, along with significant redness around these bubbles, it may be infected and that can be contagious, but that is much rarer. So keep in mind that the resin is only around for two hours and if somebody doesn't come into contact with your child in those first two hours, they will not catch poison ivy. Secondly, it's on his or her face. I don't want it getting near their eye. Poisoning ivy does not seem to ever get into the eye, actually, even when the eyelids swell up and the eye closes shut. While it's cosmetically displeasing, it is not um, um, a serious problem in the sense of damage to the eye or to the face as well. Three, don't scratch it. It can spread. Again, the chemical in poison ivy that causes the rash is gone after two hours. The rash will develop in areas that a person touches in those two hours after exposure. But the rash may pop up in different areas over different days, giving the illusion it is spreading due to itching. It is not spreading due to itching. It is where the child touched themselves in, within two hours after uh, being exposed to the resin of poison ivy. And finally, I think it's poison oak or sumac. What is it, Doc? We just can't tell. Just remember one thing. Leaves of three, let them be. The skin starts to get red. Hands or face are the commonest place. And the groin can be just about anywhere on the body, actually. And what it initially looks like and feels is like the rind or the peel of an orange. It is firm and tense. It's red, not orange. And it has little pores in it. So that's what the skin looks like before it gets to blistering. So that's the early stages. Now the redness may be sensitive, but it is not tender. So that's the way you tell the difference between that and a, um, uh, a, 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 an infection, a deeper skin infection. Oftentimes people will treat with topical Benadryl because of the itching. Sometimes we suggest that you use topical hydrocortisone to reduce the inflammation and give oral Benadryl to kids. Now, I want to caution teenagers that are driving not to, uh, to drive and take Benadryl together. But that often is the way that might help reduce um, the redness and the blistering um, if you start this quickly. Um, there's no sure cure. Um, um, for poison ivy itself on topical things. But if somebody has it on their face and their eyes are getting puffy and swollen shut, we will use uh, oral steroids, prednisone. Please, this is not something that needs to go to the emergency room. You should give us a call and we can discuss how to manage this. Um, this is Dr. Lester Hartman um, from Westwood Mansfield Pediatrics, um, uh, proactive in your child's care. Um, caring for patients for over f and families for over uh, 50 years. Thank you and have a nice day.